Hey, it's Dren, and today I was going to talk about this project I did called Mescaform Hill, The Missing Five. It was a VR animation project that I uh, worked on this year. I composed and audio directed this, this project. It's a linear 15-minute um, uh, animation uh, made exclusively for VR. Though, the reason I'm featuring it is it just got released as a 2D experience that you can watch in your web browser. So even if you don't have an Oculus Quest, uh, which is where you would go to see this thing, uh, you can watch it in your web browser. And I'll put a link to that down here. Um, so uh, it's a very interesting story. Uh, it takes place in modern Nigeria. Uh, that's one of the challenges that I had with the palette for the soundtrack for the score is that we wanted it to sound like modern score, but we wanted to have some traditional elements of um, some of those instruments associated with that part of the world. So um, I took various things to kind of create a palette that I thought would work for this. It's a bit of a supernatural story. Uh, so we have some elements of that in here as well. First, I'll just let you watch the cue I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, I just have this one cue that I'll show you and um, this is from the 2D web version. So here's that and then I'll talk about it. All right, so there you have a little scene from Mescaform Hill. I'm gonna show you here my logic session. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I got going on here. Uh, I mentioned some traditional instruments. Through a lot of the score, I was using Balafone. If I did use Balafone, I usually didn't use it straight. I usually added some sort of delay or, well, in fact, I have one track here that I can show you. Balo effects, so I, had, I was using this Physion which kind of gives it changes the attack on this one this i was using a bowed guitar setting and kind of tweak that and then i was also using this widen um, plugin for that particular sound and then usually i would add some delay to so it kind of had a familiarity about being an african instrument but then it kind of got tweaked so that was that was kind of method one of blending modern and traditional of taking a traditional instrument i did this with cora as well and then added some delays or added some process and then kind of gave it a little more of a ethereal supernatural but also updated sound to it um, so this cue you heard a second ago had live strings in it so we had a live string quartet plus contrabass we had the singers um, both um, african singers in this and they sing throughout the whole score then we had this weird banjo thing, and that was kind of leading the charge on this. So this leads me to uh, my second way of dealing with blending the, the new and the old, traditional and modern. I used the banjo because I didn't have a Cora. I don't have a Cora, I don't know how to play one. If I had one, I could probably tweak it and make it sound okay, but I didn't have a chorus player I could just have sitting in here saying, hey, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Why don't you try this? Uh, if we had more time, I would have done that. But what I did have was I had this weird fretless banjo and I have nylon string guitars and some things that I can kind of get to sound a little bit like a chorus if I tweak it a little bit. Uh, or things like the modular system that I'm going to show you that I use to kind of sound like a mallet, but an updated weird mallet sound. So I'm going to look at that in a minute too. But here's just the banjo. I'll just solo this. You can hear this thing. So the weird thing about this banjo is it's a fretless banjo. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. And it's a very big, long, minstrel, I think is what they call it, banjo. 
So we have that kind of ostinato thing going on through it. And then we've got these little chords that I played on it. They're in stereo. As the piece would go through, there would be little, little chords that would play. Then I had added this nylon string guitar part. You hear how that sounds with the banjo? So the guitar by itself might sound just like a guitar part, but you add it with that kind of weird banjo thing. It kind of takes on a different element. It doesn't sound just like a regular guitar, especially when the banjo goes to this little slidey part here. I like the way those two parts kind of syncopate together. Um, now you can see here I've got the modular and we've got this automated, so I think it comes in around here. And I'll show you how I did this part a little bit later in the video. But that was kind of our mallet sound, an updated mallet sound using rings as the primary source, modular source for that. Um, then what else do we have going on here? Then we've got these vocal parts. These are the uh, samples. The samples are not in the final score, which we already watched. Then we have my really bad vocal. Here, I'll embarrass myself. The only reason I included that in there was for the vocalist to actually hear some of the vowels I was using and the way I was presenting those notes rather than just putting them on the page. I thought it would help them to hear that. So I included my bad vocal in there so they could hear it. And those are sort of the elements of this cue. So now that we've seen how this kind of comes together with, there's not that many elements, guitar, vocals, we got the string quartet. This is the mock-up strings. I don't have the live strings in this session. And then we've got our modular stuff. There was one other thing I wanted to show you here in the queue, just a little composer thing that I did. In the scene, you can see that the characters are looking for clues. They're looking around this demolished house, trying to see, trying to see if they can find what had happened. And so the queue's in five until this moment. So you'll see Adi's looking around. He spots a picture over there. As soon as he holds the picture, then we switch to 4-4. Now what you're seeing here is a placeholder picture. We didn't have the final art in for the version that I was composing to, but we knew this was gonna be a key moment in this scene where Adi finds something that's important uh, to figuring out the answers. If you watch the, the video, you'll see. So that's why we change over to five from five four to four four here right in that moment. It's as if some, there's progress starting to happen, and then we bring in the vocals here on that part too. So anyway, just a little bit about how I constructed that cue and changed the time signature when there was a real change in the tone that we wanted to convey as progress here for the for the uh, main character starting to sort out the clues. I'm gonna show you my weird minstrel banjo. So this is it. Um, it's uh, made by Mr. Rioso. That's the manufacturer's name or the builder. Uh, made in Oakland. Yay, Oakland, here in the East Bay. And this is number eight of 37. So I guess there's not that many of these things. Um, I found it on consignment at a store here in the East Bay. So this is the banjo, hard to tune. How do I tune it? I just tune it to whatever piece I'm working on. So I kind of get this one tuned up to the, uh, to the cue here. So that's basically, it was a simple part. So kind of playing a little bit like a um, Delta Blues slide guitar kind of part. I didn't want it to sound Delta Blues-ish, but I wanted to have an other world kind of, I can't quite place this type of instrument sound to it. It does kind of sound like a banjo, but it's all nylon strings, so it doesn't have a typical banjo sound. It's got this more mellow, and it's a very long neck. Uh, you can get pretty low. There's one, one cue right when the main character, Ade, is gonna go in the forest. You see his face, he's kind of scared, and you hear this. 
<laughs> so if you watch it, you'll you'll hear that part, and that's just the low string of this banjo. Um, so this banjo has a lot of it's even weird calling it a banjo because it didn't really fit what a banjo is, except that it's got this round skin head, uh, drum drum head kind of thing. Anyway, it's a lot of fun to play, and it was fun to come up with parts for this uh, particular piece. Okay, so that's that's the, the banjo part that I was going to show you. Now I'm going to take you over to the other side of the room, over there, and we're going to check out the modular setup that I used to create some of the sounds that you were hearing here. So um, how I clocked it and how I made it work uh, within this cue. So um, we'll check that out now. So here is the basic setup. So let's come down here. So down here at the bottom of my rack is sort of my uh, clock stuff. So I can take a clock directly from Logic going here. I'm not doing that because it gets complicated with recording uh, everything. So just do it easy. I set up PAMS to do this. So I have a couple things I can run clock and run that into other things. Um, yeah, this Dofer and this other ALM. Right now I'm just going to use PAMS. Um, I'm not going to give you an in-depth thing about PAMS. Hopefully you know how it works. Uh, I've basically got the BPM to set, uh, set at 80. BPM set up, which is the same as the song. And then um, I'm taking output two of this white here. And you can see how I've got that subdivided. That is coming out, going into my Pittsburgh um, sequencer. Okay, so micro sequencer B. I love this sequencer. I think it's really pretty rad. I like this one too, this little Erica one. For this, uh, I'm going to show you this, because this is what I used on the piece. That goes into scales here, and I have just an F, my, uh, F major scale worked out here. Coming out of scales, I've got that going into here, and then this will double the signal. One of them is going to B's chalkboard, so I can quickly change the um, octave, which you'll hear here. And that's coming out, going into in rings, which is basically like mutable instruments rings. This one's from After Later Audio. So I've got that going, uh, I've got that going here into the voice per octave, voice per octave, you know what I mean, volt per octave, and then I've got, oh, I'll get to this in a second, I'll put this in. Then I've got the outputs going into my mixer over here. So that's the whole setup right now. So it's pretty basic, you can hear what I'm doing there. What I was doing was just Generally playing with some modulation, and then I would play with these sliders. I know everything's going to come out as F major, so I'll just play with these notes. And I kind of love the randomness of this. And then you can change a direction, you can change... You can change a lot of things in this one that I enjoy. You can change the direction. And that's probably going to be a little bit boring to hear all the time. So let's change that again. So it was just that process going through and playing with these different uh, directions, playing with this sequence until I found something that was enjoyable. And I might go up here and tweak some of these things. Move up here to rings. You know, I might go up here and play with some, some of these things. Or I would just take what I've got here is I've got this Octosource from Erica. I might put it into something like position. And you get a little modulation there. And change the rate or the wave. I really love this one for randomizing some modulation stuff. It's pretty fun. If I wanted to, I could sync this off of one of these clocks. I kind of like the randomness of it, however, to go through and do that. Or I could change, so right now it's I'm changing position. I could change shape. Now we're getting some different sounds out of the shape just by one little modulation here. And then I can go back and tweak this. So I, I didn't get too complex with it.
But as you can see, you can sit here for a long time and play around with this stuff and it's super fun. And then once I knew that I had something I liked or wanted to hear what I wanted to do, I would just end this and then go sync it up to the to the um, song. Let's try, let's try damp. How does that sound? Ah, it gets radical. Probably turn that down a little bit. But you can hear how that sound, that original sound from Rings, you can see how that, how Rings kind of already has this mallet-like sound, which is a fun thing to play around with. Um, and so trying to modernize a mallet sound kind of comes easy to this sort of setup, playing around with modulation. Now, if we wanted to get crazy, maybe I'll modulate one other thing while we're also doing the uh, the damping. I'll, sh I'll do I'll do position maybe. That's pretty cool. I like that. But you get the idea. All right. So back to the other stuff. Okay. All right, well, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. That's basically all I wanted to talk about in this particular cue, how to blend weird things like fretless banjos, fretless minstrel banjos, and um, nylon string guitar, and vocals, and modular synths, all together in a cue that kind of is creating a suspenseful, supernatural, traditional <laughs> feeling to it uh, using a blend of kind of modern techniques and some traditional instruments. All right, so thanks for watching. See you next time.